did you know that design thinking is a creative process that we as creators have been using for hundreds of years in every creative industry? Want to discover how musicians, dancers, and artists might have been the original design thinkers? Buckle up and let's dig into the soul of design. Welcome back to the channel, and if this is your first time here, I'm Anik. As a creative entrepreneur, I dive deep into the world of UX, UI, and product design. Now, today's topic might seem like we are hitting on a bit of a tangent, but stay with me on this one. Instead of just sticking to the conventions of design, we're going to traverse the vast world of creative industries from dance to music to art. So even if you think, why are we talking about dance and music on a design channel? Trust me. There's a method to this madness, the universal thread of creativity. Creativity is a universal phenomenon that can be found in every field, whether it's music, dance, or traditional art. While the creative process may seem different across various disciplines, they all share a similar rhythm and pattern. These processes are nuanced in execution, but they fundamentally resonate with the same principles of creativity. In order for you to adopt the creative process as a designer, it's therefore important for you to look into how the creative process works. Not only from a narrow perspective within the design world, design thinking and double diamond are only frameworks and terms created and used within the design world without really pointing to or paying homage to other creative fields where the exact same process has been used for hundreds of years. Double diamond beyond design. The double diamond approach is a well-known methodology which involves both convergent and divergent thinking. The psychologist J.P. Guilford coined these terms all the way back in 1956 while studying and doing research of human intelligence. These terminologies refer to the creative process and is used in all areas of creativity. As a dancer myself, I used to come up with a lot of different pieces, routines, moves, or choreographies with a pretty open mind. And this usually led to an idea for a piece or a routine that sort of formed into a prototype, very similar to the world of design and product development. I then iterated it until perfection upon receiving feedback. And being into music production myself as well, I've seen many music producers, songwriters, artists, and even painters that are mirroring this type of methodologies for decades. Voices from history and the creative process. Leonardo da Vinci once said, art is never finished only abandoned. And this speaks to the iterative process of refining creativity. Similarly, Picasso noted that every act of creation is first an act of destruction, referencing the phase of divergent thinking where you just throw out ideas and later evaluate them through the process of convergent thinking. The birth and myth of design thinking. Design thinking is a modern label for an age-old concept. It is therefore, in my humble opinion, essential to go beyond these buzzwords and study to understand the creative process in other industries to truly understand how you can fully utilize the same processes in the world of design. By dissecting how the creative process works and how it has evolved, we can learn how to apply it to our own creative endeavors. Wisdom from Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin, a well-known music producer, has shared his perspective on creativity in his book, The Creative Act. He emphasizes the power of the first draft, the importance of iteration, and the magic of spontaneous creativity. By embracing these principles, we can unlock our full creative potential. The power of the first draft. Rubin believes in capturing the raw energy and emotion of the initial moments of creation. He often discusses how first drafts, be it a song's initial recording or a writer's first words on paper, carry an authentic, unfiltered emotion that's hard to replicate. When Johnny Cash covered Nine Inch Nails Hurt, Rubin urged him to tap into his deepest emotions and vulnerabilities. The first take carried so much raw intensity that it became the foundation of the final version. This wasn't a polished, practiced version, 
but carry genuine emotion. The importance of iteration. So while the first draft carries raw emotion, refinement is what turns a good piece into a great one. Ruben has always been an advocate of revisiting, revising, and iterating on work. This process might mean stripping down a song to its very core essentials, changing the arrangement, or even re-recording or capturing a different mood or energy. Ruben has often pushed artists to perform multiple takes of the same song, each time tweaking little elements. For instance, with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Ruben would have them record, re-record, and then strip back songs, always searching for that magic take that combines the raw energy of the first draft with the polished feel of a refined piece. The magic of spontaneous creativity. Ruben believes that overthinking can be a creativity killer. Instead, spontaneous moments where artists just let go and let the magic happen can lead to the most memorable pieces of art. Ruben's sessions often involve artists jamming and improvising. With bands like Metallica, he would let them play freely looking for moments of spontaneity and brilliance. In these freeform sessions, iconic riffs or lyrics might arise, ones that weren't pre-planned but just felt right in that very moment. The dual nature of the mind, creative versus focused. Neuroscientist Dr. Huberman has shared his insights of the mind during the creative process. He describes it as the conscious and the subconscious mind working together to create something new. The subconscious mind, which is where creativity stems from, is often associated with boundless thought and wandering imagination, while the conscious or the focused mind is linear and goal-oriented. Both are crucial in different stages of any creative process. Psycho-Cybernetics, written by Maxwell Maltz, provides an insightful take on the conscious mind's responsibilities, where he emphasizes that results are not created through the conscious mind. The conscious mind should regulate your focus and keep you away from distractions, while the subconscious mind uses imagination and boundless thoughts to help spark ideas and creativity, which in turn leads to results. Conclusion Unlocking Your Creativity to unlock your creativity, embrace your first sketches and drafts, no matter how messy they may seem. Understand that refining is an ongoing process and separate ideation from execution. Let your mind wander during the generative stage, then focus on bringing those ideas to life. Finally, use feedback as your compass, but let your instincts and passion be your north star. Over time, your instincts will be refined as you grow your skills to become a more established and experienced designer. As explained and referenced, these same rules apply to any creative field and have been used for it ages. As we've come to the end of this video, I've shared my perspective on the universal dance of creativity, drawing parallels from various fields of my creative endeavors to the world of design. Even though this may seem to be on a bit of a tangent, in reality, we're all part of the same processes. But now I'm curious to hear about your story. Whether you're a designer, musician, artist, dancer, or anyone with a passion for creativity, I'd love to hear about your creative process. What's your creative process like? What challenges have you encountered along the way? Take a moment to drop a comment below, share your experiences and your journey. And if you found value in this video, remember to subscribe and hit that like button. It helps like-minded creatives to join our discussions. Until next time, keep your creative juices flowing.